or a brain, some people refer to it as. Basically, this is what the film goes through, and this is what governs the speed of the platters. So there's a hole right directly in the middle, you just drop it in, it sits in there, you take your little ring out, that goes back in here. So this effectively now comes your tape up plate, and then you feed the film through. So if you watch what will happen here, when I pull the film, if I'm the motor on the projector, you'll see what happens. That arm moves and you oh, see the plate move. Yeah. So that's all it's doing. That governs. That's making sure the projector has a constant feed. So that's, that's what that's doing, basically. Um, this side, when you come down, that's going through something called a tension roller at the bottom. So basically, what the, the, the idea of it is, if the projector pulls at 24 frames per second regardless, and this has a problem with feeding it and the film stops, what that will do is lift up. Yeah. So what's that? That's now set off the alarm, and it's killed the lamp. Yeah. So it goes through uh, cleaning rollers. Basically, these are the same things as Find better wear. And it's like a rubber that you wash and then it gets sticky again. And all you do is you just keep washing them after each showing. Off to the projector. At the moment, you're not actually lacing up in the projector. You're just getting. Yeah, this is where you don't want to get. You don't want to get your soundtrack the wrong way. That would be. That's that's the that's the bit you can muck up on and lace up. And keep going. Keep going. It's a lot with professional videotape. You have a lot of lead on. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's just trash to make sure you're ready for when you catch sure. When you're looking at it, it looks very complicated, but it's actually, you know, you know what it's like. You, you've got your lens, you've got your gate, you've got the, actu the aperture, the intermittent, the most important thing, um, the two main drivers, and the sound head. And what so, were you saying about the film? There's three different soundtracks on the film. There's three different soundtracks, yeah. So, I mean, this is this is scrap film, but at the moment you've got, you would have the analogue soundtrack running along here, you'd have SDDS soundtracks running on the outside, and a DTS timecode as well, so that you've got an awful lot of technology So with the DTS timecode, you have a separate you, Yeah, you'd have a, a system in the rack that is basically, you get sent a disc with the 35mm print that you load in, and that has the soundtrack. That's so you want to get your rack frames in line with the gate inside. This is basically keeping it yeah, attached to the intermittent. You shut your gate first to make sure that doesn't move about. I tend to, everyone's different, I loop the top first to make sure that's all in here nicely. And again, it's all rule of thumb, I know where that needs to be, it's just one of those things. And then you're going around the sound head. Always make sure you've got a nice tinky tinky noise. Sound a bit bigger than ones on one. It's a little bit. <laughs> Same thing, just a bit bigger. Yeah. Um, always make sure it does that. If you were doing that, you know you've got a problem. So you always want to hear that nice tingy tingy. You're going around the jockey there, just keep the, keeps yeah. it all steady, nice and smooth for the sound. And then you're going around the automation head here. Basically, what this little gadget does, if you have automation attached to it, it will sense uh, any silver tabs you stick to the film yeah. that will trigger a command. So it will trigger house lights, it will trigger tabs, masking, whatever you program it will trigger. Um, so that's what that system there is for. Um, you, you do all that on the PC, don't you? Um, no, not uh, inside here. That, that would yeah. be pre. I mean, we don't touch that, but someone would have preset it, so it, it knows what it's looking for. Um, and really can do anything. So you're just now making sure your loop underneath is going to be. Just about right. The rule of thumb is two fingers. Sometimes it has to change. Just about right. And that's that. So shut your lens turret up. Obviously, you've got two aspect ratios. You've got cinema scope, and you push your gate in because your gate changes for the aspect ratios. So that would be an anamorphic widescreen. But this film's in um, anamorphic. Sorry, this is film is in widescreen or flat. Um, so it stays in that aspect ratio. So we don't have to do any scope changes. Which is always a bit dull, really. Let's go down. That's the gate. That's the that's the aperture plate. So the middle one is. I, I'm t I don't remember what aspect ratio that is. One one seven five apparently. Um, but we never use it. It's it's either scope or widescreen. And so that's what that's what's allowing the amount of light through to hit the frame. Um, so that's what that's doing. But anyway, so that's that. Um, and now we need, to, in order to just run it and get it going, we need to take up the tension because at the moment there's no tension. Done. So, uh, 
the arm, what that arm does is govern the speed of your tape upgrade. So that's got to be, you'll see as, as it starts, it will make more sense. So that arm is keeping this at the right speed. The, the sprocket, the, 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 sorry, the things that actually pull the, the, the film. Pull the film. Yeah. Uh, there's three. There's the intermittent, which is doing the drag, stop, drag. It's doing the 24 frames per second. That's what the right. intermittent's doing. These constantly run. These are more like the drivers, just to make sure that this has a constant feed. Okay. And here as well. So that's, that's, that, and that doesn't change speed at all. They are just constantly running. Um, but that's your important one, your intermittent. Um, so, right, so we're just ready to get it kicked in. It takes a slight delay. So what I'm checking for is that the loops are right now, that everything's running in its tracks, and it's all behaving, basically. So this is this is and, and this has presets for all for all your things. so when I start this I will manually fade the house music like that and then it goes over to U1 which is user one has a preset for your advert level basically so three nine not too loud um, and then when the trailer comes on I'll knock it up to four and then when the feature comes on I'll just click ten and it will go to the whatever I've set as which is wrong I need to set that to six just as well I did that so there we go to number ten I want to change that from four seven whack it up to is a preset, okay. Saving changes. Done. Done. So 10 is now 6. So if you're running analog sound, how does that work? Is it still fed through the system? So same thing, yeah, it just comes through here. And it, it knows it, it, it knows what it's reading. It'll, okay. it'll automatically revert to whatever it needs to be on. Um, so this is how you monitor volume back here. This is this won't affect the auditorium, this is purely in here, right. and you can monitor any 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 channel you want. You could just do centre channel, left channel, right channel, left surround, all that stuff, but we only need to really worry that we're hearing it, so it's not a detailed speaker, it's, you just want to know that it's running. Um, and then you've got your amplifiers down there, it's just, there's not a lot to it really, that's, uh, that's all your amps. And a print of a film like this, what sort of cost would that be? Uh, for a film like this, uh, anywhere from eight... Hundred to a grand per print. So that's why the industry has been desperately yeah. driving digital cinema because it costs a fraction of the round. And how many plays can you get out of the film? Because obviously it's going to get oh, scratched and damaged. Do, oh, for a 35 can do thousands of runs. Okay, no. Oh, God, yeah. But they will eventually bleach and, yeah, and yeah. discolour. And if, I mean, we're talking donkey's years. There, there are film prints going to doing the rounds that have been around for 20 years that will still be used. Um, we had a um, uh, sound of music in here, and that real one guy had looked after it. He brings it in, it gets run, he watches it, and, it, and that must have been at least 15 years old. So, when you get the film, is it ready? Is it all cleaned, ready to project, or do you have to? We don't. We, we don't. I mean, these days, because we have so little film now. Um, we don't really, but when we were two screens and we were 35 mil, yeah, we would be there with our little spirit cleaning That's joints clear. up, um, taking cement joints out that were in the middle of a frame because when a factory produces it, the, the, it's, it puts film together, the film stock, it will put it together wherever. wherever. Yeah. So it could be a nasty, great big yeah. down the middle of a frame and you can just, just chop it out, it's just a detail thing. Um, but these days it will just get whacked on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> they do! We had we had a digital blowout in screen two, and it absolutely shattered everywhere. Good and I had to convert the box out, um, and there's no way you can you can replace 
it's hot as well, don't forget. You, oh, yeah, there's, of course. There's, you've had a 2,000 watt lamp burning away for, you know, <laughs> you need to let that cool down before you go anywhere near it. It's going to be warm, yes. Um, so, yeah, lamp blows. Um, I'm trying to think of other problems. We've, we've had, um, the, the plates have, have had issues and we've had to cancel screenings. Um, we've had the film made up incorrectly. I've made the film up incorrectly before. Flight of the Phoenix I made up. Yes, Flight of the Phoenix I put real four in the wrong way round, so they were taking the plane back apart again. Um, that was fun. And of course you have to cancel the whole screening because you have to remove yeah, all the yeah. reels to get to that reel, take that reel off, reverse it, put them all back on, and then, but it happens, it just, it's human error. And when you splice the film and it together, if one of those was to break, could you sort that film out quickly? Film snaps are fine, we, 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 we don't mind film snaps because they're fixable, as I was just saying. If a film snaps, and inevitably a film will snap in this area yeah. where the gate is because something will have snagged, there will be a, a dodgy sprocket that will have just caught. Um, and, and, it ten and again, it, because the tension sensors are so clever, it will cut the whole thing out. It knows there's a problem. So it will kill the lamp, it will set the house lights up. Oh, right. Yeah, it does everything. It's incredible. Fantastic. Um, and then it's your job to literally take it all out of the projector, take the knackered film out, cut the new, fresh ends, join it, but however much it doesn't matter, you've got to take out seconds sometimes, whole seconds of film mm -hmm. um, that are completely knackered, and then join it back together and get it back on the screen. No, you can get a, it. Don't, you get a bit of a Laurel and Hardy thing going on where there's something like, oh, and then they're there. Yeah, um, yeah plenty in a row. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just clattering through the projector. So you've got a motorised spindle there and a free wheel on there. So if I was breaking it down, you'd be putting this on here. Your bobbin on there, the film attached to this comes all the way over here, takes out, you whiz it all off, you take you have to disengage the motor off of this. Yeah. This free falls basically. And you've got electric motor to do it now, don't you? This is this is the electric motor yeah. on here, but this free this free spins and you have to have a cloth in your hand and break this yeah. as you're slowing it down. So your coordination has to be bang on and I cannot tell you how many films have been ruined from trainee projectionists um, doing this. It's actually this takes quite a while to get right, I think. Some people find their problems, some people took a bit longer. Yeah, you're incredibly fun. I mean, this whole thing will wobble. This goes at an incredible pace when it's really running. Um, you know, this, this will do this when it's breaking down. How about focusing issues? I mean, if, if it wasn't completely in focus, so would you focus, see from here? focus is just on the front here for each lens. You've got a little silver. But from here, would you be able to tell it wasn't in focus? Oh, God, yeah. You, would need oh, God, so, yeah. you wouldn't need anybody down there? No, 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 okay. no. Um, you've got to have a good eye. Absolutely have a good eye. for you to focus it? Yes. Yeah. And I focus it for every single screening. Even if the last screening was a perfect focus, I will focus it again. And I always try and focus it on the BBFC logo because right. it, gives you, it gives you plenty of lettering, which you know... So once you're focused up, that you shouldn't have to oh, adjust no, you it throughout the feature. No, you don't come back to it to the credits, to be honest. I mean, yeah, OK, it's good to just keep checking and make sure there's no... something hasn't come off for a roller or all that sort of stuff, but it'll just... you don't do anything to the house lights. 